If you're using green screen in your video or are thinking of using green screen, then you're going to want to watch this video with my five tips for better results. Hi, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alex. So today we're talking about green screen and let's just get one thing right out of the way, which is should you or shouldn't you use green screen? I know a lot of purists will say that you should spend a little bit of time and get a proper scene set up behind you and use a uh, real scene for your YouTube backgrounds or your video production. And that's great, but it's not always possible, is it? And in fact, in my case, the reason why I use a green screen is because I use this setup day in, day out for my uh, business meetings, my Zoom meetings every day and on Microsoft Teams. But then I'm also obviously creating this video content, which requires a slightly different backdrop, a different mood. Uh, and then also the reason why I got into video production in the first place was because I was producing uh, some course content for a, uh, a course. And so there again, that required a different backdrop. Now I didn't want to get into building out little studio sets for each one uh, and similarly the uh, the background that I've got in my uh, space at the moment is not entirely ideal I have to say because I'm in a concrete basement so <laughs> it could be a lot prettier and I wanted something that just looked a little bit better and so that's why I'm using a green screen and there are lots of reasons why you may want to do that too. So with that said let's get into uh, my tips. Okay, so number one is lighting and this isn't going to be a sort of lighting tutorial. There are people far more experienced than I that can tell you all about how to do professional studio lighting. Uh, but I will say it is something that is important to get right. And there are a few simple steps that you can take to try and improve that. And when I talk about lighting in this instance, I'm actually talking about the lighting of the subject. Although you will notice through these uh, top five uh, tips, lighting does play quite a large role. It can, it can make a bad camera look good. In this instance where we're talking about the lighting, I'm talking about the sort of primary light. So the key light that is giving the most uh, light onto the, uh, the subject, uh, me. And I'm using a couple of uh, soft boxes uh, which are, if I just quickly show you, they are something like this, just so that you've got an idea. I am going to do a sort of uh, uh, a little tour, if you like, of my setup, just so that you can see uh, what I am working with at the moment. But I just thought I'd use this to illustrate. So these are uh, sort of large. They're about sort of, I don't know, two and a half foot by one and a half foot in size. Um, I'm not using this exact model, although I think that these are probably slightly better than the ones that I am using because they've got a remote and they also are, you can change the color temperature of them, which I'll come to a little bit later as well. Um, they come with these sort of uh, traditional sort of lighting stands. Uh, what I've done is I've actually mounted mine to the wall because I wanted them sort of out of the way. I didn't want the clutter on the, uh, the floor and I don't want this to feel like I'm in the middle of a sort of temporary uh, space. Uh, it's something, as I say, I use day in, day out for my Zoom meetings. And so I had the light sort of set back. The ideal place for lighting, if you watch any of these um, uh, videos on ideal setups, is that the key light should be close to you. Uh, Caleb Pike, for example, uses a big lantern style uh, uh, soft box and then says just bring it into the frame and then just push it so that it's just out of the frame whereas mine are actually back in the corner of the room a small room uh, although it is um, so yeah that's uh, that's what I'm using uh, there are other options available though if you want something that's a little bit less uh, less bulky than this uh, and there's you know obviously a whole uh, price spectrum that you can go on with that uh, one popular light that seems to be used by a lot of people at the moment is the Elgato key light. So this as you can see is a much smaller form factor and it actually just bolts to the or clamps rather to the edge of your desk and then its height is adjustable so that you can uh, uh, set it you know where you need it. The uh, thing about that you can see here he's got a couple of them mounted to either side of his monitor. These are very popular with streamers, uh, live streamers so Elgato makes a lot of stuff to serve that market and the uh, the only thing about these personally is they are touch on the expensive side at $200. <laughs> uh, quite a difference to uh, what I paid for these ones uh, although these are obviously a, a higher grade product. However uh, I do understand that the uh, the panels that are used in this are actually used by other manufacturers that are maybe not branded and don't have the Elgato markup. 
So something like this is a similar product, but you can see that this is actually two of these for $165. Uh, same sort of idea that they clamp to your desk and then you can adjust the height and angle and so on. Uh, the other thing about these ones is they've also got a uh, attachment on the back there for batteries. And I think these are possibly the Sony batteries. I'm not quite sure about that for cameras uh, that just plug into the back there. So you can either use it wired or unwired. And again, on the back there, you can see that there is a couple of controls and a little screen, and that allows you to adjust the brightness and also the color temperature of the light, which again, we'll come to a little bit later. So yeah, make sure that you do put a little bit of thought into your uh, lighting and making sure that your subject is uh, correctly, uh, correctly lit. Now, the next one that I want to talk about is uh, the actual green screen itself. Now, what I'm going to do is just temporarily uh, switch off my green screen and uh, or green screen effect rather, and I'll show you the material that I'm using. So this is just a material that you can buy from a material shop, comes on a big roll, and I think I've paid, you know, it's a couple of dollars per meter, something like that, or a couple of dollars in total for three meters, I forget now. Um, and yeah, it's very, uh, very cheap material uh, to buy. Uh, but one thing that people don't do is they don't actually pull the material tight when they have it behind them. And if I just pause for a moment and show you the effect that this can have, Okay, so I've just kind of draped that little piece behind me, uh, but imagine it was, you know, the whole the whole frame was like that with the green screen. Now, as you can see that there's a lot of wrinkles in there, it's kind of hanging down all ruffled, and you've got those strong creases there where the material's being folded. And what I'll do is I'll just show you the effect of that when you actually switch on uh, the green screen. So here you can see you've got, uh, well, it's uh, it's, quite bad really isn't it you can see the sort of lines of the creases in the material behind me where it's not being keyed out properly uh, there's another issue here which I've just sort of switched on which is this uh, this bottom corner down here you can't see that properly uh, and that's actually well come on to a later point but yeah you can see um, it's just it just doesn't look good and that's because the you know the processor is having to figure out uh, where is the the boundary between the green that you're trying to key out and the rest of the frame now I will say that um, actually the software that I'm using Ecamm Live is a great piece of software and if I just share my screen a minute I can show you how uh, when you activate the green screen using this toggle then you do have this slider where you can adjust the uh, the amount that is being keyed out so it is quite good in that respect because I can you can see as I move this slider it does a better job at clearing up that area behind you uh, but you will make the, um, the the standard setting is just here by the way right in the center so it's still not quite got that wrinkle out whereas if I uh, just pull this down now in fact if I just turn this down even further so that you can see the wrinkling a little bit more if I remove this now so that's going back to my my original screen uh, then it's doing a much better job at sort of clearing up that space as I say the standard out of the box uh, setting is around about 50 so that has sort of solved the issue of the uh, the wrinkling that was directly behind me we've still got a slight issue down there but we'll come to that one in a moment uh, and so yeah it's really important that you do get your green screen um, tight now the way I did this was I actually used uh, plumbing pipe PVC plumbing pipe where you have the little angle bra brackets uh, the straight pieces and T connectors and things like that and I've just made a sort of square frame with some cross bracing in the middle and the reason I did that was because uh, sort of back two years ago when I was needing this to be something that was portable I just made that so that I could easily pop it up and collapse it and uh, take it with me when I had to move around from uh, different places so that I could always get that consistent look in the background of my meetings and also the videos that I was producing uh, however if you want a portable option that you don't have to uh, make yourself <laughs> then there is another option and if I just share my screen quickly then this would be the uh, Elgato green screen and this is basically, um, if you're familiar with, you know, if you've been to conferences or exhibitions, you might have seen these sort of pop-up boards. Uh, well, this is basically exactly the same as that. So it uh, collapses down into a small slimline form factor, and then you can just basically pop it up uh, whenever you need it and this is great if you are traveling and you need to take something with you but it's also good if you want to be doing uh, say zoom calls from your uh, kitchen dining room living room wherever in your bedroom and you just want to uh, have that something that you can pop up and then pop away so that it's not in the way when you need it uh, when you don't need it rather 
Uh, another option if you are in a sort of more semi-permanent uh, location and you just want to be able to use a green screen sometimes is uh, something like this again from Elgato which is basically like a drop down blind isn't it or projector screen something like that uh, and this one is actually fixed to the wall so it's not quite so uh, quite so movable uh, but you can see it does just sort of clip on and off quite easily. So those are two options for something if you don't want to uh, do what I did and actually make something up yourself and uh, yeah it's just whatever way that you can do it try to get that screen as flat and as tight as possible the other option of course is you can actually just paint your wall it does exactly the same uh, job if you're finding this information useful and you would like more content like this then please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to switch on those notifications and you'll be notified whenever I make a new video and if you have got any questions or comments about anything that I'm discussing in this video then leave a message below and of course anything that I mention in the video today will be linked to in the description down below as well. Coming back to lighting actually again, uh, you'll notice that we've still got this issue down here and that is because uh, although you can see that the light that's coming on me is okay, uh, there is some sort of shadows being cast by, well I've got the desk here, I've got my monitors, I've got some other things around so that the, uh, the area just in that bottom corner is not actually getting well lit. And as I said before, if I just quickly flick over to my uh, uh, Ecamm setup, you can see that you can actually adjust this by moving this slider so we can adjust how much is being keyed out uh, and if I move it all the way down to there you can see it's almost getting rid of it but unfortunately uh, just before that is fixed that problem it's created this problem here which is it's trying to key out too much and so I'm not quite uh, uh, there it's sort of taking me out of the picture as well so the issue is basically that the green screen is not lit and that is point number three is making sure that your green screen is lit. Now if I just turn this light on here what you'll see is now it is fully lit behind me and there is no issues whatsoever and again this is uh, the basic setting on Ecamm Live. Uh, when you start the program up and you bring the camera in if you toggle e the green screen on it will already be set this fade level to 50 percent so just straight out of the box it works and what i'll do is i'll just show you now the difference between my green screen now where it's lit from below and i'm actually just using some uh, i think they're philips uh, led uh, strips and i've got those down behind me and the other thing about that is it does actually give some backlighting and that can be quite useful in sort of separating you from the background and and having that sort of uh, backlighting uh, to you of it normally you'd have like a hair light or something above behind to just do, give you that separation but this is giving a similar sort of effect and if i just switch that light off you can clearly see uh, what I was talking about before. That is the problem area, is that shadow just down there. So another area, another way, if you don't want to, uh, you know, install a specific light just to light your green screen, is just make sure that when it's not in operation and you're not keying it out, then just look for any areas like that and try and, if you can, somehow improve the light quality in that area so that you don't have that shadow. So again, I'll pop that back on again now and pop the uh, green screen on. So on to point number four and we're talking here about camera angle and specifically making sure that whatever position you have your camera in front of you, excuse me, whatever position you have your camera in front of you in, uh, in your setup is matching the camera angle and position that would have been used for the scene that is used in your backdrop. So if you've got a picture of a particular room or background that you're going to use but the camera was taken from, you know, two or three meters high looking down but you're sitting down at a desk then the perspective will be all wrong and it just won't look right at all and these sort of things you see quite a lot on zoom calls where people are just putting in some sort of background behind them and it's not uh, it's not looking right at all the perspectives all off and it can actually be a little bit distracting <laughs> at sometimes if the thing doesn't look right you don't really want the background too much to uh, distract from uh, what you're talking about and I mean that's a whole nother video about how you should actually set up backgrounds for zoom calls which I'll, I'll talk about because I certainly wouldn't be using something like this on a uh, sort of professional zoom call for business uh, but as I say that's something for a video for another day Still on the subject of making sure things match with the background, then number five would be 
coming back to lighting is making sure that you've got the actual tone and uh, colors of the lights that you're using in your room uh, are actually matching in some way to the tone and color of the scene itself so you may or may not have noticed but there is a obviously there's a slight sort of purple hue in this court side of the picture and a slight blue hue in that side of the picture and I've actually got a couple of lights in the corners of the room that do actually match that so you can see there's a slight sort of uh, purple tinge on this side of my head and a slight sort of blue tinge on this side of my head and it may not uh, be something that's immediately obvious but it does just all add to the uh, lighting of uh, of me the subject it is matching in some way what is going on in the, uh, the the lighting in the scene the other thing is the actual temperature of the light so as i say you could have a sort of warm or white light uh, cool light if you like and if I come back to these uh, lights that I showed you earlier they've got this uh, panel on the back which is uh, you can adjust the color temperature so there's a whole range of um, uh, color temperatures measured in Kelvin uh, K and so you can adjust the, uh, the sort of temperature of the light in that way and again these ones as well you can adjust the color temperature in there as well there are ways that you can do this in your camera settings as well so you can adjust it in there if I uh, just change the settings uh, now on my camera you can see uh, that I'm changing the the warmth of it so now I'm probably going to start looking a bit more orange or if we go the other way then I'm going to start looking a lot paler and uh, yeah if we go too far it has uh, <laughs> that effect so yeah try to make sure that you are in uh, in keeping with the scene behind you and just to sort of illustrate this point I'll just show you a slightly different background which is the same scene but let's have a look how it looks in the daytime so here you can see um, the whole tone of the picture behind me is just not at all like the uh, tone that I've got on my my skin so there's a more sort of warmy yellowy tone that I've got coming through onto my skin whereas this is obviously more like uh, daylight in this particular picture if we change to this one now it is uh, slightly more uh, matching so you've got this warmer light but now it, it sort of almost stands out really doesn't it this uh, area of um, sort of blue on this side and purple on that side because I've got that uh, that uh, lighting behind me uh, whereas if we come back to the original scene then it uh, so, sort of looks a bit more cohesive now and incidentally the uh, the lights that I'm using for the um, uh, the lights behind me to add that flash of color is uh, these ones Ulanzi VL49 RGB uh, there is actually Ulanzi VL49 but that doesn't have the RGB uh, so I'd definitely recommend these ones they're very uh, very reasonably priced uh, they, you can see obviously they're meant for a cold shoe on the top of a camera so I got them because I can use them for sort of multiple different purposes as well I know the uh, aperture series of lights there are some really good ones you can use there which have sort of magnets you can control them from so you can attach them into multitude of places and you can control them all from an app on your phone uh, but they are a lot more expensive I think they're about a hundred dollars something like that whereas you know I'm not looking to uh, go to that level just yet I just wanted something that's going to be able to give me some color and uh, what these can do is you can uh, uh, change between white and colored light and then when you're on the white these little arrows here uh, if I just quickly show you which ones I'm talking about I should have got my mouse pointer ready maybe you can't see my mouse pointer but yeah these these two little arrows here you can use to change the warmth of the light from the uh, very sort of yellowy warm light up to the sort of more daylight uh, white light uh, and then this button here switches between color and white and when you change to color then these little arrows allow you to change from uh, all the way through the spectrum of colors so 360 degrees 360 colors and then you can also uh, flick over to here and change the brightness from zero to 100 uh, percent they are really yeah uh, really good solid little lights i'm very pleased with them so i got a couple of them uh, they are battery powered so they've got 2000 milliamp hour batteries which will last about sort of two hours depending on the brightness you've got obviously if you've got them dimmer they will last longer um, but they're recharged by USB-C uh, but also if you have just got them plugged in permanently then you can use them uh, for for longer they just 
they can be powered from that as well. Well, that about wraps up my five tips. So just to recap, making sure you've got your subject yourself uh, properly lit uh, with adequate lighting. If you can try and make sure your green screen is uh, somehow pulled tight behind you so that it's not rippled or any has creases or anything like that in it. Also look out for any shadows that you may notice that are being cast onto the green screen itself and try and improve the lighting in some way or remove those shadows as much as possible. Then also making sure that your camera is positioned so that it looks right for the scene that's behind you and is in keeping with it. And on a similar note, just making sure that the overall look, feel and tone of the uh, lighting that you've got in the room is also matching the feel and the tone of the light that you're using in your scene. So I hope you found that useful. Once again, if you have found it useful and you would like any more information, then please ask a question down in the comments below. And if you've liked what you've seen today, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you'll be notified of future videos. That's all for me today. So I hope you found that useful and I look forward to seeing you in one of the other videos coming up next. Don't forget to check those out.